I am Thomas, and we are, we will be visiting the grave of Karen Ann Quinlan, uh, located in the Gate of Heaven Cemetery in East Hanover, in New Jersey. This was a case uh, that made national headlines. Um, so briefly, after returning from a party, Karen Ann Quinlan became unconscious and she had stopped breathing. A medical intervention saved her life, but a lack of oxygen left her in a persistent vegetative state. So after several months uh, with no change in her condition, Karen's parents wanted their daughter's ventilator removed. The hospital, together with the Quinlans, they opened up a legal battle against the Morris County prosecutor over whether the withdrawal of life support constituted homicide. The right to die. Kind of um, debate. On March 31st, 1976, which was a landmark decision, the New Jersey State Supreme Court ruled 7 to 0 that privacy rights, here are the parents of Cameron, the privacy rights assured a person's prerogative to forego life sustaining medical treatment, and that in this case, a parent could make the decision for Karen. Now, eventually when Karen was taken off the ventilator, Karen shocked many by continuing to breed on her own. And here is the grave of Karen and Quinlan. So after the ventilator was taken off, she continued to breed on her own. She lived in a coma for nine more years. And uh, she would die of pneumonia on June 11th, 1985. So this case, it, it kind of, you know, and then you'll, you might be also familiar with the Terry Schiavo case as well. But this case shed light on the, the, a difficult question of what should and what should not be considered a life. The right to die movement has since kind of worked to make uh, more clearly define the borders between life and death uh, with the courts attempting to honor the wish to preserve human dignity while still fulfilling their mandate to prevent murder. Now, I know for a fact that there are certain states, I just do not know which states, because I remember hearing about these stories, about states that will allow you to, I guess, to, I guess it's called a suicide pill, pretty much, uh, but you have to go through evaluations, um, doctor visits, to pretty much determine that what you have is terminal or you know it, uh, it, it will cause you to live in great pain yeah you know, i'm just using it glancing over it you know very briefly but people are able to take a pill in in certain states i uh, just don't remember it i believe it's like the the west somewhere in the west and i know that for a fact because i remember reading something now i should have obviously prepared more that's my apologies um big national case that uh has been news you know again you might be familiar with uh you know terry shiva more recently um but just you know briefly just to kind of backtrack what happened kind of you know when she was 21 right um, like we mentioned, she became unconscious, but apparently they're saying that 
she she was consuming Valium along with alcohol. She and she was on a crash diet, and that kind of caused her to lapse into coma. Um. You know, she left her parents' home that day, uh, moved into, she, you know, she was living with two roommates at the, at the time in a house a few miles away uh, from where her parents lived. So, you know, this happened a, a few days after moving into her new house in April of 75. Um, she went to a friend's birthday party, a local bar. She had eaten, again, almost nothing for two days because she was, like, on this crash diet, apparently trying to uh, lose a few pounds. That way she could fit into this dress that she bought. So she hasn't been eating for a few days on a diet. Um, at the party, apparently she drank several gin and tonics. Shortly afterwards, she felt faint. Uh, she was taken home, put to bed. Uh, her friends had checked in on her about 15 minutes later, and they found that she was not breathing. Uh, that's when the ambulance came. They did mouth-to-mouth -mouth resuscitation. Uh, some color, um, you know, returned to her skin, but she did not regain consciousness. Um, you know, admitted to a uh, Newton Memorial Hospital. She was there for nine days in a unresponsive state, then transferred to uh, more of a larger facility in uh, Denville, New Jersey, and uh, still unresponsive, vegetative state. She weighed... Um, 115 pounds when she got to the hospital. Um, she had suffered again irreversible brain damage after she had experienced an, an extended period of respiratory failure. You know, failure lasting no more than 15 to 20 minutes. So, because she wasn't bleeding for a period of time, that caused the brain damage. And, you know, they, the doctor said that her, um, her brain was damaged to the extent that she would be in a persistent vegetative state. At the time of her death, uh, she weighed 65 pounds. It's a big story that made national news. Rest in peace, Karen.